Hey families, I wanted to show you our news to you for the week and kind of give you an idea about what's in the packet. There's a lot of stuff. And again, I have, um, on if, in order to share this well on my screen, I'm going to use the master files. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that's not a, like applicable because I didn't print it because it's just too much. There's a lot of material in here. So let me share my screen to you and show you um, what we've got. And then let's see here. There we go. Okay. So this is our news for the, this is actually for week two. So um, what happens is every week they have a new article that they've written and a new thing that's going on. So we're gonna, we're gonna work with our, our uh, week two packet for this, but what I want you to do is also apply the same thing to your week one packet. So for week one, we had, or rather the week of April 27th through May 1st, we have the article about Greta Thunberg and Earth Day with a recipe about Swedish meatballs and a science experiment that is sorting living and non-living creatures. So what you'll see is that there is a, um, there's a, an article, like a thick news packet that's all about the news and it includes a bunch of things in that. And then there's another packet that has a lot of worksheets that sort of relate to that news article, okay? So we're gonna go through a little bit of both of those things, just so you get a picture of how you can use it. Um, so for instance, looking at next week's um, article, this is all about sharing happiness and it'll go through the news. It'll be a couple pages of news. This week, this uh, rather next week after May 4th, we will have um, a recipe that your family can try. I'd love to hear if you guys do try this. We've always wanted to cook at school, but of course with all the different dietary um, restraints and restrictions, and then also just access to food and cooking facilities is very limited. So um, so that's always been something we'd like to do, but we haven't been able to. So if you guys want to try this, we'd love to hear all about it. And I'll show you some of the ways that you can share that with us. Um, this recipe tells you exactly how to do it with the visuals as well. There's a dreadful knock-knock joke that no one knows, but we, or knows, like, it's not really funny, it's just dreadful. So we try to um, have the kids understand and practice, like, like laughing when it, you're supposed to laugh. And so we go through like the knock-knock, like, okay, it's a knock-knock joke. Okay, then the joke is delivered and then we say, ah, ha, 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 and we practice laughing. And you can make it as silly as you want to. Um, and then there's a little comprehension question at the end, some little super easy, what do you like? And some of our keywords, right? Then you'll also see that there is a communication board involved. And so this is another tool that you can use to help your student share what they thought about or what they learned about and read about in these different articles, right? And then we have, um, then we have some worksheets. So for instance, you'll have a coloring and labeling worksheet. There's a matching worksheet, and those should be pretty familiar. Um, I think I put in word definitions because I thought that would be a fairly simple one. In some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. So for the week of Greta, the Greta Thunberg article, um, it is a little bit abstract. And so it might be easier to use it as like a following directions one where you pre-cut, you know, cut out the different icons at the bottom and then tell your student to find the icon for law, find the icon for um, protect or something like that, and or earth, and then let them, and then help them to put it on the number one, like put it in the first space kind of a thing. Um, and that would probably be a good way to go. And then, uh, let's see, I think we have in, the, in this week, we do have a following directions one. So we want you to have, help your student to try to describe what they see in the picture so um, in picture number one, I see a boy, I see number one, and I see a bear. And then in the truest form of implementation with this, this worksheet, you would have them like help you, like either you've read the sentence to them or um, they read the sentence themselves if that's in their capacity, and then they would mark off the correct one. If you can get them to just say what they see in that picture, I think that's a huge score. So push it as far as you see fit, but, uh, but know that you can always scale back and you don't have to use the, the whole right side of that paper. Um, let's see, we did do beginning sounds. That's pretty traditional. At the very bottom, they have a key and then they're not in order. 
just to make it a little tricky, but um, but you can totally, these, this one's a little bit simpler. The other one's a little tricky. So if anyone has some trouble, just let me know and I'll help you figure out which one goes where. But usually um, sort of like, you know, process of elimination is a good way to go if those icons are too out there. Um, then we had our tracing letters, tracing words that were related to the story. And we did a cut and paste matching activity. We've got that in there and there is a maze, um, which might or might not be appropriate for some kids. It might be a little too tricky. And then I think for some students, if there was punctuation, there's a punctuation sheet. If your student is learning to give you the alphabet still, don't worry about the punctuation sheet. There are students who are starting to read, and so this is a more aimed towards them. But unfortunately, this, this sheet got into everyone's um, packet, as well as the capitalization sheet. Again, if your student is not yet reading, is just, just identifying letters or maybe just putting together like very short words, don't worry about this. Um, let's see here. I believe there is a dot to dot. It's all counting by one. So again, this is a great opportunity to count, to use your sign language supports, to um, practice verbalizing those letters, or sorry, numbers. Oh, can you tell at the end of the day? Oh my gosh. I did put in patchwork math. This one's kind of fun because if you take it one color at a time and you have the student practice coloring six and then saying the number and saying the color, that works on a bunch of different grade skills. And you're working on fine motor control because you're working to try to keep it in these really tiny little boxes. So Miss Kathy will be really excited if you guys can succeed in um, implementing this. And then um, which is greater, which is less than. So this one, if you're working on counting, I would use this as a counting worksheet. So for instance, you could take the first row of the rainbows and say, okay, let's count together. One, two, three, using your sign language support. And then we're gonna write the number three. Okay, let's do it again. One, two, three. And now we'll touch the number three that we just wrote. You can do the same thing with the next row and not deal with which is greater, which is less. If you wanna up the game and you wanna to try to make it like an addition thing, you can make, um, you can take your white, your dry erase pocket and just put a blank piece of paper in there and have your student write the number on there and do, okay, we're gonna, we say one, two, three, let's write the number three. Now, how many are down below? There are six down below, write number six. We're gonna set it up and we'll do three plus six. Let's count them all together. So, um, so that they're practicing that sort of foundational addition piece. You can do it as high as you want where it's like they're independently doing it or if you just have them counting, like count three, count six, count all the rainbows together, that's nine, boom. That's a great foundation piece for them to do. And same thing too here with uh, less than. So you could even, um, you can also address it like greater than, less than, if you were to make a number line on your dry erase pocket and then show them, okay, we figured out this is like five porches, we'll write the number five on the worksheet. Now there's three porches, write the number three on the worksheet. Now let's go to our number line and let's look Here's number five and here's number three. Five is greater, right? Um, so that's totally an option too. And then, um, and again too, you could always make it into a subtraction one, but I would not give them um, a situation where you've got four as the number of, like as the, the primary number, and then you've got like six down below or something like that. They wouldn't know what to do with that. Um, so you'd have to do a little bit of playing with this. Um, I did put in what goes next. So that's a nice pattern one. That's another great math skill. Word problems similar to, you could have it be counting, uh, count four, count one. You could do it as a word problem. You could do it as a count of, counting all together kind of thing. So it's count four, count one, count all together, it's five. That's totally appropriate. For some students I did put in um, as a separate packet, the time sheets. Because I know some kids really are loving the time. Um, let's see here. And then, and we did do recipes. So 
in the event that you elect to do these recipes, either the Swedish meatballs or the rainbow fruit salad, um, one of the opportunities you have to engage with this is to have your student help you in the kitchen to create the shopping list. So this is the shopping list page. It tells you exactly what you need, and then you can have the student cut and paste into the have or the need columns. Um, and additionally, if you decide that you don't want to do this recipe, you can just cut off the top and have the student help you um, with writing in or like maybe hand over hand, you guys can write in what you need to get at the grocery store in order to make another recipe that you choose to do. And that way your student has some more engagement in the whole process of grocery shopping. Um, and then you could always say like, okay, well, we're at the grocery store and we need a jar of sauce. We're at the jar of sauce. Pick up one jar of sauce and then they have to go get it from the shelf. Um, and then two, there's a recipe review. So this is really cool. Like have, after you guys have made it, you've tried it, what do you think? Write the name of the recipe, who was it reviewed by, and then what was in it, how did it taste, was it easy to make, what do you think it was healthy, that kind of stuff. Um, and then the last thing in here is our science page. For the week of uh, April 27 through May 1, it is a sorting um, activity of living versus non-living things. For the following week, it's a walking rainbow. So this is something that you would set up in your home using some pretty common items. So if you guys tried to do this, I'm really excited to hear all about it and how it worked for you and your student. If they thought it was a cool project, that kind of thing, let me know. Um, but this is great because it gives you, it gives you like the parent page, all the different description. Then here's like the, the shorter version for kids. Um, and then they have to do a hypothesis. Here's how you set up the experiment itself. And then, uh, and it gives you step by step the whole way through. Here's how you organize your data with questions. And then after that, it's finding your conclusions. And then there's, uh, I don't think I've included the artwork, which is too bad, but we have so much artwork right now for you guys with the butterflies. So that's it. So, um, so I hope that's enough work. I felt like we had sent home a lot of work in the beginning this first week um, for uh, the week of April, 1, April 27 through May 1. And so if there's too much, you can always spill it over into the next week. However, if you find that you are just knocking all of it out and you're like, oh, I need more, just let me know. I'm happy to help whatever way that is, you know, whatever way that manifests for your family. There's no judgment. I don't have time for that kind of stuff. I just want to find solutions for you guys. So everyone can have a, a good, happy time and as meaningful of an experience as we possibly can. So anyway, I hope you guys are having a great time today and, um, and we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.